गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो वेलकम बैक फॉर आवर टूडे सेशन दैट इज डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ बीम्स ओके सो टुडे विल सॉल्व वन मोर प्रॉब्लम फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ प्रिशेक्स कॉन्क्रीट बीम विथ देर इज अ स्मॉल डिफरेंट अरेंजमेंट इन द बीम सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई विल रीड आउट the statement of the problem given okay so the problem is like a pre stressed concrete beam of rectangular section 150 mm wide and 400 mm deep is stressed by a four cables each carrying an effective force of 250 kN span of beam is 12 m The first cable is parabolic with an eccentricity of 50 mm below the centroidal axis at mid span and 50 mm above the centroidal axis at supports. The second cable is also parabolic with zero eccentricity at supports and eccentricity of 50 mm at mid span. the third and fourth cable is straight with a constant eccentricity of 50 mm below the centroidal axis if the beam supports a udl of 10 kN per meter and modulus of elasticity of concrete that is ec is equal to 400 kN per mm square estimate the deflection at the following stages so first case we have given pre stress plus sulfate second case pre stress plus sulfate plus lye load third case if the loss ratio is 0.8 and creep coefficient 5 is equal to 1.6 estimate long term deflection okay so according to the statement we have the given data okay just look out for the given data okay so my dear students look at here so there are total four cables here there are total four cables with different eccentricity okay so what they have given cable 1 cable 1 is parabolic and it is having the eccentricity at mid span 50 mm below the centroidal axis and at support 50 mm above the centroidal axis okay again cable number 2 cable number 2 is parabolic so with eccentricity at mid span is 50 mm below the centroidal axis and zero eccentricity at support okay and cable number 3 and 4 is straight because they are given with a constant eccentricity means the cable is straight that is again 50 mm down from the centroidal axis so understood there are three cable four cables first cable and second cable parabolic third and fourth are straight cable okay so according to given data okay you have to understand and you try to draw the rough sketch of the uh, try to draw the rough sketch of profile according to according to the given eccentricities okay so other properties are they have given the beam size as 150 by 400 understood okay then therefore area you will get you can easily calculate area then they have given the pre-stressing force then i so i is pretty good but well okay then the span of the beam is 12 meter okay the next is you have to find out the deflection due to pre-stress plus sulfate okay so we we'll calculate the dead load so according to given so we got the dead load as 1.44 kN per meter that is 0.15 by 0.4 into 24 okay then because of that we have got the deflection that is 5 wl to 4 upon 384 ei so you can easily calculate that again so we got the deflection due to dead load is 12.15 mm okay then also deflection due to lie load 
सो द लाइन लोड इज गिवन टेन किलोमीटर पर मीटर सो अगेन डेल्टा एल एल इज अगेन फाइव डब्ल्यू एल टू फोर अपॉन थ्री एटी फोर ई आई ओके ई इज ऑल्सो गिवन ई सी ऑफ द कॉन्क्रीट इज फोर्टी किलो न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वेर सो देर फोर वी गॉट द डिफ्लेक्शन ड्यू टू लाइन लोड ऑल्सो एटी फोर पॉइंट थ्री सेवन एम एम ओके ना विल नेक्स्ट मो टू दी नेक्स्ट पार्ट ओके नाउ वी आर टू फाइंड आउट डिफ्लेक्शन ड्यू टू प्रेस After the calculation of deflection due to dead load and dye load, the next part is deflection due to pre-stress. So here they they have given four cables. So you have to calculate the deflection due to pre-stress for each and every cable. Then you have to add for the all four cables. Okay. So we'll take up one by one. So we'll take up for cable number one. Okay. So cable number one, what they were given? The cable number one is parabolic with eccentricities. So what is the eccentricity at mid span? We have the eccentricity is 50 mm below the centroidal axis and support again 50 mm above the centroidal axis. So in this case it is shown. Okay. So according to that we have got the minimum diagram. So that is one is plus that is p into e1 again minus p into e1 plus e2. Okay. So p into e1 then again p into e1 into e2. So we can calculate the magnitude of that. Okay. By using that magnitude, again by using the Mohr's moment theorem, we can calculate delta P S A X bar upon E I. Okay, so that is 12.5 is P into E we have got. So that is again uh, we can calculate A X bar upon E I. So we got the pre-stress deflection due to pre-stress. That is because of cable number one we got minus 4.68. So minus means upward. Okay. Next for cable number two. So again the cable number two is parabolic. Understood? But they have given the eccentricity at only mid span. There is no eccentricity at support. Okay. So because of that we got the bending moment is only parabolic. P into E negative. Okay. So again so it is delta P S. Okay. A X bar upon E I. So we have to find out area. That is half of the bending moment diagram, half of the parabola into a x bar. That is x bar. That is the centroidal distance of parabola, half of the parabola. Okay, that is phi eight of six thousand because total span of the beam is twelve thousand mm. So that's why half of the is phi eight of six thousand. So we got the deflection due to pre-stress because of cable number two is again minus. 5.86 mm, which is again upward because it is negative. Okay, now we'll move ahead. Okay, now because of cable number three and four. Okay, so cable number three and four is straight because they are given. It is with constant eccentricity of 50 mm. Okay, means constant eccentricity means the cable is straight. Okay, so because of that again we'll get negative bending moment. Okay. So because of that, so we can calculate by using area method that is moment area method, Mohr's moment area theorem, or we can use direct equation that is P E L square upon A T I. You have to multiply into two. The question is why? Because there are two cables. Deflection due to two cables. So P E L square upon A T I into two number of cables. So because of that, we got the deflection. Due to pre-stress, that is because of cable number three and four is minus fourteen point zero six mm. Total it is upward only. So what you can observe from in cable number one the deflection was upward. Cable number two deflection was upward. Cable number three deflection three and four deflection is upward. So we can see the deflection due to pre-stress is always upward. The deflection due to pre-stress is always upward because The upward deflections will be balanced by the dead load and light load because the dead load and light load the deflection will be always downward. So to balance that, we are giving opposite force by pre-stress. So when the deflection is upward, that will be balanced by dead load and light load. Then we will get ultimately the compatibility means uh, upward is equal to downward. Okay. So next, what they asked first. You have to calculate the short-term deflection due to pre-stress and dead load. So pre-stress you have to add for all the cables. Okay, 
that is minus uh, 4.68 minus 5.86 and minus 14.06 cable number 1 cable number 2 and cable number 3 and 4 and 12.15 is because of dead load so ultimately we got the deflection due to pre stress plus dead load is minus 12.45 okay it is again upward okay so next we got the permissible deflection as per code for pre stress and dead load only so they are given as one that is span by 300 1000 uh, 12000 divided by 300 that is 40 mm so it is in permissible limit okay so next move on to the deflection due to pre stress plus dead load plus line load okay so again we have the because of cable number 1 minus 4.68 because of cable number 2 minus 5.86 and because of cable number 3 and 4 we have minus 14.06 and plus dead load is 12.15 plus lie load is 84.37 okay so ultimately we got the deflection is 71.92 mm okay right, which is downward so when the beam is subjected to lie load the deflection turns to be downward when there was no lie load the deflection was upward okay and to balance that when you apply lie load the deflection will be automatically downward then you have to check the permissible limit now what is the permissible limit so it is l by 250 please look at here so in the previous case the deflection due to press uh, the pre stress plus dead load okay and the permissible limit for that it is l by 300 okay but here when you consider line load so the deflection the allowable deflection the permissible deflection will be l by 250 okay you don't have to take 300 because we are taking we are considering line load also so it will be l by 250 so it is 48 mm which is not okay because the permissible deflection as per the rule is 48 mm but our deflection is more than the permissible limit so that's why it is not okay so we have to check only check whether the, it is within the limit or it is out of the limit okay so here the deflection is more why because the span of the beam is more it is 1000 uh, 12000 mm on point 12 meter okay so that's why the deflection is more okay now next is we have to we have to find out the long term deflection also okay now the long term deflection is again the same equation that is delta il delta il means because of load delta ip means because of pre stress into loss ratio that is final deflection divided by initial deflection that is pf is sorry not final deflection pf is final pre stress divided by initial pre stress into 1 plus 5 where phi is creep coefficient okay so delta il is because of load so we have got 84.37 plus 12.15 because of lie load and dead load plus deflection due to pre stress is they are given uh, we have got minus 14.06 minus 4.68 and minus 5.86 into loss ratio that is final pre stress divided by initial pre stress so there is a loss and the loss of the ratio is 0.8 and the creep, creep coefficient is 1.6 so 1.6 so 1 plus 1.6 so ultimately we got the long term deflection in the beam is 199.78 so we, we have achieved all the solutions they are asked to calculate the deflection due to pre stress plus self -head. We got that. Then again, they are asked to calculate the deflection due to pre stress plus self weight plus lie load. So we have calculated that. Then again, they are asked to calculate the deflection that is log term deflection. So that also we have calculated. Now, my request is so you have to go through the video and I am going to upload the uh, PDF of this solution also. You go through you solve if you get any doubt okay you are free to ask the queries 
वी कैन डिस्कस दोज क्वेरीज ओके थैंक यू